sour. Turkish delight, Sabine puts a square canister on the lunch table. Ben and me smell roses as soon as she opens the box. Take one. The pink powdered sugar squares are soft and chewy. This is better than store candy, I say. Delicious. Sabine grins. My mother will be so happy you like them. Ben bites. Mmm. Edmund loved Turkish delight. I wonder what it tasted like. Who's Edmund? Sabine and me giggle that we ask at the same time. A character in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Ben reads everything. I'll read it, says Sabine. Better ask your parents. It's pretty Christian. A Muslim can't read Christian stories? A Christian can't read about Muslims? Outrage. Sabine looks like a puffed cat. Sure they can. I just didn't want you to get in trouble. Sabine sighs. Father wouldn't mind. Father says, sharing ideas is good. But he also says, since 9-11, Muslims have to be careful. People think we're all terrorists. You're not a terrorist, swears Ben. Sometimes I get picked on for my scarf. It's Wednesday. Sabine's wearing blue. Whispering, head down, Sabine leans closer. When I'm at the store by myself, the cashier sneers. Go back to Saudi Arabia. Sabine throws up her hands. Turkey's closer to Greece, two countries away from Saudi Arabia, a separate country. I want to ask, why Saudi Arabia? Instead, I grumble, people shouldn't pick on kids. Folks shouldn't pick on anyone, says Ben. All three of us pop another Turkish delight into our mouths. I knew blacks were discriminated against. Also, poor people, homeless people. I didn't know Muslims were, too. Religious freedom, I say, chewing. Sabine and Ben both nod. I swallow rose candy, then blurt. Pop survived 9-11. What? What did you say? My father survived 9-11. It's like the cafeteria has fallen away. Sound has been sucked out. There's no sense of anyone else in the room. Just me, Ben, and Sabine. I squirm, feeling desperate inside. I want to see it, I say. What happened? All of it? How could a plane by itself make the towers disappear? Any computer can show us, answers Ben. The school library? Not a good idea, Sabine says, flatly shaking her head. Pop's happy our teachers won't show any video. I don't understand. If Pop was there, at the two towers, why can't I see? Sabine, have you seen what happened to the towers? No, but my family talks about it. A lot. With an internet connection, anyone can see. At school, the public library, home, anywhere. Ben digs in his pocket. My smartphone. Sabine grips his arm. Maybe we shouldn't. I want to see. I feel sick. I do and I don't want to see it again. But this time, all of it. Pop was there. I want to know what happened to Pop. Uncle Ahmet used to visit Turkey every year. Since the towers fell, he's always searched. Held at the airport when he tries to fly home. Sabine releases Ben's arm. It isn't fair. What's Saudi Arabia got to do with anything? Fifteen terrorists were from Saudi Arabia, says Sabine. Nineteen in all. Two from the United Arab Emirates. One each from Lebanon and Egypt. Without saying a word, Ben waves us to another lunch table farther back. We huddle close. Ben types, searches on his cell phone. A small arrow appears on screen. You sure? He asks. I nod. Sabine murmurs. Yes. The tiny screen lights up. Two planes were hijacked by terrorists, says Ben. Two? I ask, trying to understand. Actually, four. One hit the Pentagon. One crashed in Pennsylvania. Sabine is biting her cuticles, making her pinky finger bleed. This is the first plane, whispers Ben. <laughs> It's awful seeing the plane fly closer and closer, its silver nose pointed at the building. 
People were on the planes. They must have been terrified. Did they know? Did they know they were going to crash? On the cell phone, the explosion is soundless, but I can imagine sounds. Screaming, tearing, slicing through concrete, steel, and glass. The building's structure shudders. People shout, call, and cry. Peering, leaning over the phone, we watch. I hear Ben and Sabine breathing. Seventeen minutes later, the second plane crashed into the South Tower. Don't look at this part, warns Ben. Shut your eyes. Sabine closes her eyes. Me? Of course I'm going to look. What? My brain and eyes don't work. I don't believe what I'm seeing. My brain says it isn't so. People are falling. No, leaping. Out windows. Escaping fire. Heat. Suffocating heat. Can I see? asks Sabine. Not yet. Ben looks at me. I can't believe we're watching together. Can't believe Ben has seen this horror before. So many times. Ben is strong, tough, but I feel sorry for him. Sorry for me. I feel sorry for all those people in the planes and towers who were expecting an ordinary day. I inhale, peering at black clouds hellish flames raging, roaring inside and out the towers. Did the folks inside the buildings know a plane had crashed? That passengers had died? That it wasn't an accident? The camera shifts back to the North Tower. A man and a woman holding hands leap. They look like skydivers, wind fluttering her dress in his jacket. Can I open my eyes? asks Sabine. No. Ben and me hush. When there's disaster, fire, smoke, maybe your brain doesn't work. Just think. Get away. Run. Run away from fire and smoke. I start to cry. Sabine opens her eyes. Nobody's jumping now. The video camera shifts back to the South Tower. You've seen this before, I ask Ben. My dad's military. Ben's gaze doesn't waver. Ben's kind, but he knows a lot book learning and life learning. Though he looks soft, he's already wised up that life can be hard. Sabine's pale, her eyes big. I'm sorry she's seen the video. With all the happiness fly out of her? I wish I could talk with Ma and Pop, or with a teacher. Sabine moans, I gasp. Ben's hands become fists, and the tiny cell scream. The South Tower, floor by floor, falls leveling, collapsing, like an accordion, down, down, down. Tons and tons of gray smoke billow, darkening the sky. Particles of glass and concrete flurry like a tornado. Steel, concrete, glass pound, rush like death elevators, squashing each floor. One after another and another. Boom, boom. Boom, until there's no height, only weight hitting the ground. The people, where did they go? The South Tower burned for less than an hour, then it collapsed. Doesn't make sense, I say. Its foundation was strong. Took years to build, adds Sabine. Ben clicks another link. The planes were like explosive. Gasoline, gallons and gallons of sinking oil burning. Metal so hot, it lost strength, softened. Metal was the building's bones, I say, imagining metal sheets and beams buckling, glowing red. Ben avoids my eyes. The North Tower was hit first, collapsed second. The camera shifts to the North Tower. The unbelievable is going to happen again. How long did it take, I murmur? One hundred and two minutes. The North Tower collapsed 29 minutes after the South Tower, Ben. Sounds like a robot, dull and factual. The bell rings, lunch is over. Ben stuffs his phone into his pocket. Sabine wipes her eyes and adjusts her scarf. Going back to class, the three of us move like zombies. History. On the whiteboard, Mr. Schmidt writes, Attacks on American Soil. 
Beneath the header, he adds dates, April 18, 1775, the Revolutionary War. Paul Revere was on a horse and he said, The British are coming! The British are coming! Classmates yell. Is that really true? asked Mr. Schmidt. Many answers. People just think he said that. His mission was top secret. June 18, 1812 war of 1812 in 1814 the british invaded washington dc and he points to michael they burned the white house to the ground december 7th 1941 i know says stasia waving her hand the japanese attacked pearl harbor technically hawaii wasn't u.s soil it didn't become a state until 1959 but yes mr schmidt stops writing the attack led to America's entry into the war. December 7th, 1941, World War II. Ben, Sabine, and me glance at each other. We know what's coming. I want to yell at Mr. Schmidt and tell him to stop. Maybe I shouldn't be learning this. I clench my hands. I have to learn this. It's part of my parents' world, my family's, which means it's part of me, isn't it? I shudder. Sabine is crying again, sniffling at her desk. Mr. Schmidt writes ever so slow. February 26th, 1993. World Trade Center bombing. I'm surprised. I was expecting September 11th, 2001. Other attacks on American soil were by nations. This is the first transnational terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. You mean they tried to bring down the towers before, Astasia? Yes. With a truck bomb, it failed. Mr. Smith turns back to the whiteboard. September 11th, 2001. He puts down the marker. His shoulders slump and his back curves. No one says a word. Mr. Smith turns looking like an even older Yoda. Al-Qaeda terrorists attacked the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. We call them terrorists because they are not representative of a single nation. Instead, their ideologies. Here is what that means. Ideologies are narrow-minded people, incapable of independent thought and critical thinking. So since 2001, America has been enraged in a new kind of war. A war on terror. Angel raises her hand. Why do they hate us? I can't help groaning. My head aches. Ben, his back ramrod straight seems frozen, staring at the whiteboard. Sabine's elbows are on the desk, her palms cover her eyes, her fingertips touch her scarf. Mr. Schmidt isn't answering Angel's question. It's like his stomach is tied in knots. He's all choked up. I scowl. You should be tough. Tougher. Tell us the whole story. Behind my closed lids, I see floors collapsing, great gusts of gray dust, smoke rise, Seconds, mere seconds, for the building to squish, squash, layer by layer, with tumultuous roaring everything and everyone. I'm sick of Mr. Schmidt, sick of what he and all these other Brooklyn teachers have to say. History is dead, not alive. It doesn't mean anything if they don't teach the whole story. In my mind, I see overlapping circles, connections. I see Ray's cut-out dolls. Five of us, Ray, Rita, me, and Ma. Pop is barely holding on. All four of us trying to raise him high. I'm angry. September 11th broke something in Pop. How come Pop never told me? Why isn't Mr. Schmidt telling me that? How could anybody hate my Pop? Hate Americans so much. Fierce, I push against the desk. My chair bangs, clanks to the floor. I leave. I walk out. I don't like this school anyway. Deja! Deja! Mr. Schmidt's voice snaps at my heels. Packed. I open my locker. There's nothing in it. I don't even have a lock. Deja, I told Mr. Schmidt I'd find you. I slam the locker. I don't want to be found. Come on, outside. You'll feel better. I think I won't, but it's Ben asking with his glasses and wide blue eyes. He doesn't even blink. I want to tell him that I hate him. 
That would be a lie. I don't like your boots. Yeah, I know. They don't fit New York. Oh, Ben, I'm such a jerk. The school bell rings. Recess. Doors open and yelling, screaming kids dash everywhere. Come on. The schoolyard actually has equipment, swings, a sand pit, and a jungle gym. It's fun seeing the littlest kids run and play. Most 5th and 6th graders try to look cool. Stasia and Angel practice cheer. We don't have a team, but they practice anyway. Michael dunks the ball. Ben pulls me toward the chain link fence. There are picnic tables beneath huge oak trees. He sits on the table. So do I. We're not supposed to, but we do it anyway. My old school didn't have trees. In Arizona, trees are everywhere, even ones with green trunks, mesquite. There are green cacti, too. I thought Arizona was a brown desert. It is, but it's like a layer cake. Brown earth or rock on the bottom, green trees, then blue sky. Did you know cacti bloom flowers? Every color except blue. We've even got Roadrunner. Like in the cartoon? Kinda. And javelinas. What's that? Like big pigs. Sabine sees us from afar. She's standing still. I can tell she's thinking whether she should walk over. Me and Ben watch her. Palm open, she lifts her hand. Ben does the same, like we're in a secret club with energy passing between our hands. Sabine nods and turns toward the sandbox kids. She likes helping second and third graders build castles. It's not so bad here in the schoolyard. Weird. This is the best my life has been in a long while. No worry about getting poorer, falling down the ladder. We're already at bottom. Can't get any worse. I've got friends, good teachers. I like Brooklyn Collective Elementary. Am I going to mess things up? Ben, I've got to go see it. I've got to walk across the bridge. Ben stares at his boots. Folks did that. Walked out of New York. Over the bridge. Well, I'm going in. It'll take all day. I don't care. Pop worked in a tower. There's nothing to see, Deja, Ben whispers. There's that new building. I'll see that. The Freedom Tower. It's called the Freedom Tower. How do you know so much? My dad talks about the towers all the time. It's why he joined the Marines. Why he went to Afghanistan. I rub my forehead. It hurts. Too much information. Too many pictures cloud my mind. Wait until Saturday, Deja. I can't. It's only two more days. Saturday, I'll have to bring Ray and Lita. I inhale deep. I'm going to skip school. I've never done it before, honest, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. Head slowly bobbing, Ben declares, I'm coming with you. We'll take the subway. I don't have any money. I've got money. Sure, rich boy. Ben elbows me. Don't be mean. I'm sorry. I am. My dad was going to come to New York for my birthday. You had a birthday? He sent me $50. Mom says he loves somebody else. Not a kid. A grown-up. He might get another wife. I want to hug Ben, but he might think I like him like him. I just like him. I've had his back. I'm sorry, Ben. In the last pat, I let my hand stay for a few seconds. I can feel the bones in Ben's back. He's thin, a cross between a sidekick cowboy and a weak soldier. But he's strong inside. Ben pushes his glasses high onto his nose. I'll meet you at 9 a.m. after school starts. We'll take the subway. I'll buy lunch. Thanks, Ben. It would have taken hours to walk. He grins. Too bad we don't have a horse. Trust you on a horse? Ben lightly punches my shoulder. You'd get me thrown off. I run. Ben chases me. Sabine, help! I yell. She stands waving. I stop. Ben crashes into me. We both laugh. He pulls my arm. I twist, dash. He catches me like crazy windmills. The two of us smack each other's palms. It's, Ben's, it's been weeks since we've acted silly. Is this growing up? Less silliness? Maybe I'm already grown, and even though my body's small, all I know is I'm more grown than my parents and teachers think I am. What I feel and know about my body don't match. It isn't just the video's fault. It's my whole life. I'm 10, 
11 next year. I've got to know enough to help Ray and Lita to help Pop.